Hello everyone, good afternoon. As you know, I am Imani and I'll be presenting with Morgan today for our second biology lab on karyotypes. And the disorder that we'll be discussing is trisomy 15. Now, unfortunately, we cannot be presenting in person, but if you have any questions, you know where to message us. Before we get into trisomy 15 Q, I'll first give some background information, some quick background information on chromosomes. So a chromosome, as we know, is a thread-like structure made up of DNA located in the nucleus. The DNA in a chromosome is about five centimeters long when stretched, but in the actual cell, it's very tightly coiled and super coiled into a structure looking like what you see here in the diagram. The coiling and supercoiling arranges the genes in the same way each time. So this organization will therefore conserve the location of the genes, the gene loci, on their respective chromosomes. So here on the diagram, you see the centromere in the center, which connects the two chromatids. At the ends, you'll see the telomeres, which are basically repetitive sequences of non-coding DNA, which is exactly what it sounds like, DNA that doesn't code for any proteins or anything. You'll also see the P arm, which is the shorter segment of the chromatid, and the Q arm, which is the longer segment of the chromatid. So as we also know, we have 46 chromosomes in the nucleus of our cells, 23 maternal coming from our mothers and 23 paternal coming from our fathers. So investigating these chromosomes can actually give you a lot of information about a child even before it's born, from its sex to a range of abnormalities. And to visualize these chromosomes, we need to prepare what is known as a karyotype. So a karyotype, as I said, is a visualization technique that arrests the cells during the metaphase and prophase phase of the cell cycle, where the chromosomes are most tightly coiled. Then they are separated via a centrifuge and then observed under a microscope where they are separated again. Once digitalized, the computer will then pair and organize them into a photograph which I will show you an example of on the next slide. So here we have a normal karyotype. The chromosomes are arranged by chromosome number appropriately. And as you can see here, there are 23 pairs, 22 autosome pairs and one pair of sex chromosomes. So these sex chromosomes indicate that this baby is a male. So this is a healthy baby boy with no chromosomal disorders or abnormalities. And now here we have the karyotype that we were given for this lab. So Morgan and I were given karyotype number four. Now at first glance, it might look very similar, it might look the same as the karyotype we just looked at. And it is very similar except for the three chromosomes on, on chromosome 15. So that's where we have the chromosomal abnormality. This will then mean that the baby will have a total of 47 chromosomes as opposed to the expected 46 and his defective chromosome will be around chromosome 15. So this is a very rare disorder. So the name associated with this chromosomal abnormality would simply be trisomy 15Q or mosaic trisomy 15. And as the name implies, there is a defective Q arm around chromosome 15 but Morgan will go more to that in a second. But like the other baby, this child is also a boy, as you can see by the presence of both an X and a Y chromosome for their sex chromosomes. And now Morgan will go more into trisomy 15. Trisomy 15. Trisomy 15 is also known as distal duplication 15Q or partial duplication 15Q syndrome. Distal trisomy is a chromosomal disorder in which there are three copies of the distal part of the long arm or Q arm, whereas partial trisomy is a chromosomal disorder in which there are three copies of the partial part of the long arm or Q arm. Both distal and partial trisomy cause the common symptoms and physical features of trisomy 15. However, the severity and symptoms vary depending on the specific length and location of the part of the chromosome that is duplicated. Clinical presentation of trisomy 15q. Fetal diagnosis of trisomy 15. Specialized tests like ultrasounds and amniocentesis can determine the diagnosis of trisomy 15. 
An ultrasound is an imaging technique that uses sound waves to capture images inside of the body. And amniocentesis is a test where a sample of the amniotic fluid is extracted and studied. Trisoma 15 is characterized by intrauterine growth restriction, cardiac defects, and craniofacial deformities. These craniofacial deformities are caused when joints in the bones in the skull close and cause the head to look long, narrow, or abnormally small with a bulging scene at the back of the head. Some fetuses can have clenched hands and cold feet as seen in the child in the picture on the slide. Post-delivery assessment. Trisomy 15 can be diagnosed postnatally or after birth by clinical evaluation, characteristic physical features, and chromosomal studies. Common symptoms include slow growth, difficulties feeding and swallowing, and craniofacial deformities. These difficulties feeding and swallowing can cause life-threatening conditions if food is aspirated or inhaled into the lungs and are caused by these same craniofacial deformities. Also, these craniofacial deformities can cause a buildup of cerebrospinal fluid which can put pressure on the brain. Moreover, some children with trisomy 15 can have tall statures, diminished muscle tone, which is also called hypotonia, mental retardation, seizures, and genital abnormalities. Treatment. Treatment for trisomy 15 is based on specific symptoms, so it is different for each patient. Early intervention is best with trisomy 15 to better allow the child to flourish. Treatment can include surgery to repair physical malformations, heart defects, and craniofacial abnormalities. Physical therapy is another treatment available for patients with abnormalities of their joints and muscles to improve their movement and coordination. Patients are regularly monitored for early in detection and treatment of infections such as respiratory infections, which are quite common. Here are our references and thank you for listening.